Dear friends in Christ, we thank God for another beautiful Sunday he has given to us. Today, the Lord continues to talk to us about his presence in the Eucharist, but we hear the reaction of the people to those teachings of John chapter 6. Let us listen attentively to the Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable tea language. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, Many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe, we know, that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the conclusion of the long discourse which we have listened to for about five Sundays now on the Eucharist as presented by John in John chapter 6. And in this gospel, we find the reaction of the people immediately. And you could divide this into two. One a reaction of complaining, of murmuring, and then another one of saying, who shall we go to? You have all the message of eternal life, and you are the one that we can remain with in order to have life. These are the two blocks. But you know, looking at this text, dear friends in Christ, we see this reaction of the people to the teachings of Christ. And then the gospel message of today begins with this kind of thing. Escleros, difficult, intolerable, chewy, something we cannot accept. These are difficult things to take. And so there was this grumbling and not wanting to take it. And then he says, who can take this thing? Things do not tie out to a queen. Who can accept this kind of thing? Who has the capacity to take it? You see, there is a generalization of the unacceptability of the teaching. Saying such a thing, who can have, can anyone have the capacity to accept this? In other words, it's a way also of trying to gain more people. Generalize it. And he said, who can accept this? And everybody said, no, no one can accept this. And so the grumbling will begin. And that grumbling, complaining, murmuring, gugonzo sin, is one result of such a proposition to the people. Who can accept this? Generalizing it and they say, oh no, we can't accept it. This is not, it's unacceptable. And so, in this type of situation of confusion, of trying to discern, can we accept or not accept, or actually, after having decided not to accept at all, Jesus says even something more intense. What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he came from? And remember, at the beginning of this same Gospel of John, when Nathaniel found Jesus, and then at the end he says, 
I saw you under the fig tree even before you were called. And then he says, you will see greater thing that the Son of Man ascending and descending. And he says now in this text, what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he came from and the flesh has nothing to give? It's the Spirit that gives life. In all of this, he, he intensifies everything he had said earlier on. Just to make it clear, I wasn't talking metaphorically, nor was I talking to tell you something like a parable and then I will explain to you, no, this is what I'm saying. And so, some left. But he asked the question, and you two, are you going to go? And he puts the question in a rhetorical form, in, in, the, in the Greek language, with the uh, interrogative particle me, it's, if it's there as what is used, you are expecting a no answer. So he says, are you going to go to, and then he expects the no answer with the kind of construction that was given. I'm sure, true to it too, Peter responded, to whom shall we go, Lord? You have the message of eternal life. And so, in deciding to remain with the Lord, Sometimes we're in this same difficulty. It could be difficulty of the teaching. It could be difficulty of the choices we need to make. It could even be the difficulty of the inconveniences we have to put on ourselves in order to please the Lord, in order to stand for Him, in order to be for Him, in order to also witness to Him in a confusing and confused world. Jesus says today, are you going to go to? We should be courageous like Peter to say, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. What are we pursuing? Life. Where can we get this? In Christ. And so, it's important for us to set our priorities right. It could be what we need to do. It could be what we need to jettison, throw away, not take on board anymore. It could actually be something totally different that requires some bit of sacrifices from us. That would be, at the end of the day, an affirmation of our faith, of our trust in the Lord. Let's always bear in mind that these actions are actions that will help us to witness to Him and keep and remain with Him. Because there are no alternatives to having life. And this life we can have in Christ and in Christ alone. What will this mean for us? What is the implication? Or what are the implications for us today? Dear friends in Christ. One, that the Lord each time has some expectations of each and every one of us in every circumstance. Two, that when it is difficult, we need to, at each point, be able to decide what is the Lord requiring of me in this circumstance? What is easy? What I will get easily? Or am I going to follow the suggestions of a generalization of unacceptability of such proposition? Or will I actually say, yes, it is difficult. I have these other options that seem to be good and easier but I want to follow the way of the Lord. Three, and more importantly, the act of witnessing to Him can only be sustained if we remain with Him. And the act of remaining with Him is a transforming remaining with, a transformation that helps us to also be His ambassadors and will remain with Him to be His image in the world, to be the one that will speak for him in the world and he speaks through us in the world this is the prophetic character of being witnesses this is what we are called to i like us to read through this gospel of john especially this chapter six that we have read for the past five sundays try to read through it meditatively and understand the deeper meaning of the life-giving presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And let that color your vision, let it color your mind, let it color your worldview, 
and your approach to this great sacrament that he has given to us. The Lord invites you and I to have great respect, to worship, to adore, to visit him in the Eucharist. Don't say it's too difficult. Don't say who can accept this. Don't say this is unacceptable to anyone. Don't murmur, don't complain, don't grumble. Accept it as the gift that God gives to you. And when he gives you a gift, it's a gift that is life-giving. Let's thank him for this presence of his and pray to remain with him in order to be his true witnesses. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for your word. Sometimes they're difficult. Sometimes we're confused. Sometimes because of the difficulties, we look for alternatives. But with your spirit within us, we'll be sustained to keep close to you and to be strengthened by you always in order to make the right choices. Help us through your grace to remain with you, to stop complaining and murmuring and grumbling, but accept you, accept your word in our hearts and live it out every day of our lives. Thank you for the gift of the Eucharist and help us to approach you with respect and deep spiritual commitment so that being in us and we in you, our lives and our world will be transformed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you and see you next week.